I have two spoken word pieces. One is the two. One is called Love Hard. The other is the moment he made me. So um, I hope um, you get the message behind this piece. All right. All right. Let me go. Let's get into this. <clears throat> Loving hard is rare. Loving hard is missing in our time and season because we have lost its importance, its essence, its lessons and reason. I remember when I was seven, I was sent on an errand by my mother to purchase some tea items I can barely remember when we were still using 50 Kobo and one Naira around the 90s era. So I went to purchase the items as she required, but with the change, I bought some things for myself thinking I was smarter, like I was going to outsmart her. Because when I returned, she began to inquire about the excess that I was supposed to refund her. And I started a thesis. I started telling her how the economic state in that day had changed between the day before and that day. And the prices had skyrocketed and the prices were now higher. Alfred Marshall, John Locke, Aristotle could learn a thing or two from this young seven-year-old philosopher. But standing above me was my mother. <laughs> And when she could perceive that I lied, she laid holy hands on me and changed my life forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've been on this earth for over three decades and I still remember the lesson. In fact, I still feel the backache. But that day, she was fighting to kill the thief so that her son could live, to crucify the greed so that her son could breed. That day, she was fighting for my life. My mother loved me heart. When I was nine, I was in the living room with my siblings. I didn't know there were still some wrong settings missing until my other sister had a visitor. Everybody just seemed to leave the parlor. I didn't see the reason why, so I stayed. Then she started gisting with her friend, and then a spirit of curiosity of a nine-year-old child came upon me, and then I found myself sitting in between them listening. One hour later, I was on my knees, crying with my eyes closed, hands in the air, as a bathroom sleepers was used to reset all the wrong settings and the will that was my sister. Because in that moment, there was a spirit of Amebo hovering in the atmosphere, and my sister was the ordained deliverance minister. She changed my life. <laughs> now, I learned my lesson so that even when my younger brother has a visitor, I leave the parlor. Because I still have flashbacks of the soul of the bathroom sleepers imprinted on my soul. My elder sister loved me hard. When I was in school and a meeting, a couple of friends had a preemptive intervention and started to speak to me about my spending and it hurt. Every word they said seemed to hit every fiber of my being, tweaking my emotion. Anger was what I was feeling, but it was true. They took the difficult step of speaking rather than to pretend. And now their words echo on the walls of my heart because I know they weren't speaking in spite it was out of love, they were fighting for a friend. So my friends love me hard. So when it is says that you spare the world, you spoil the child, it's not just only for toddlers, it's also for old children. Just because you seemingly have relinquished the office of loving your friends hard doesn't mean that you save them. So if you're a parent, your brother or sister or a friend, and you have not gotten to do that recently, even though it seems like you love their present, truly you despise their future destination. Because as much as you are saving face now, you are making sure that your future in the future keeps a certain destruction. Even Jesus understood that at the Garden of Gethsemane, he had to take the pain first so that we could later roll with him in heaven. So loving hard is matured love. Loving hard is rare. It's missing in our time and season. I hope that we have not forgotten its importance, its essence, its lessons, and its reason. I hope, loving heart, I'm not still mistaken that it's missing. Thank you. Okay, okay, so I've just been heartbroken. You know those teenage love, first love that were supposed to last forever and ha end with a happy ever after? I remember sitting in my room in pain, 
feeling like a thousand holes had punctured my heart from all sides and if I moved too suddenly, my heart would fall out of my chest to the outside. It was devastating. My younger brother came in and started speaking to me about something. I replied in anger and I could see in his eyes he was asking, what's wrong with me? So I left to my place of solace, which was the rooftop of our family house then, and then started speaking to someone who wasn't visibly there, who wasn't visibly there. I started telling him how much I was in love with this girl, how much she was my whole world, all the issues we had and how we got to this place. While I was speaking, the pain seemed to lessen. And then I made a request, please can I see her the very next day, even though we are not supposed to. And I felt him say, it's okay. All of a sudden I was happy. So I ran down to meet my younger brother and talk and he was shocked because he could not marry the guy before and the guy before him now. And so he stepped back because it was really weird. The very next day, she came to see me as I had requested. So it stamped in my memory that he answered, that he was interested in my childish affair. A little while passed, and then I'm heading to seek admission in JAWS, and as I'm about to board the bus, the thought pops in my head, no parental supervision, girls' parties is going down. But there was a whisper at the back of my mind, maybe it's time you get to know the God this time around. So I get into the program in school, find friends with the right mix, you know, they used to call me real because my words were plain, there were no mixture, and you know, the clicks, the feeling, the little twist, then I found myself in a fellowship meeting. We really cool people and it just seemed to be clicking and all of a sudden it felt like I was in my place of solace at the rooftop and I heard him saying, you're supposed to be there and that was the place of the making. From that day forward, I started working with a voice that I heard before I met him. And he was really shocked that he said he wanted me to keep dancing. One of the mornings I'd woken up to pray and he said, hold on, bro. It's been a while that you've been gaming. I said, Lord, you say what? That day my Xbox 360 felt the holy anointing. <laughs> and yeah, it might seem weird, but it's true. It's because of we have been locked up in certain religious walls. We forgot to meet the person. And you see, because of this experience, things about me started changing. And I started seeing him for who he really is. You know, my eyes popped open. I was now able to read the writings on the wall like Neo. And I was able to see his own description of things, the inscriptions that I was blind to see because the world that held me bound, you see. <laughs> Did you notice that in the recent years, beauty has actually been misconstrued? Because one of our favorite celebrities seemed to wear a see-through with just panties under and the commentator said she was daring. And a couple of other celebrities did the same and the commentators kept saying that was daring. Hold on. The definition of dare means to courageously do a thing. Really? Bro, that cannot be because if so, then all the mad men and mad women on the street should be called heroes. But my eyes have popped open so now I'm able to see in between the lines and see the different shades and I know the types that are mine. Because I submit my, submitted myself as clear and he's my porter. He is still my bread and butter. He's the one that sorts my matter. He's still ogre. <laughs> Upholder, he had been a giver. And for that very same reason, I became a new man. You see, I then learned that those were not really the moments he made me. Because I heard it was written that he knew me before I was conceived in my mother's womb. It means that what he wrote in Genesis most likely was for me because it said, that God had an idea. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And the Bible said, God made man in his image and his likeness. Sorry, let's rewind and let me rephrase that. God had an idea and God said, let us make man his clone. And God made man his clone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clone. So we're going to play a game of words. I'm going to start with a sentence and then we're going to try to continue like a story but make sure that we rhyme with the first sentence we're going victory savvy brother what's your name color i like the name so we're going this way to clone to jide uh, in a world of chaos i heard our seeds are praying to god to save us nice one Savvy? <laughs> savvy, you're meant to be savvy. Come on. Okay, 
Okay, so we're going to do this again because of savvy, right? I'm still going to use the same, same sentence here. But that was, that was really smart because I had that in mind, actually. Of course. <laughs> I had that as a backup plan for myself. God help us. All right, so let's go again. In a world of chaos... I see that priest got to save us. They can't blame us. Um, it's indeed hard to focus. A lot of things happen and it stares us. And even when you try to save us. Theory. Okay. And even though they try to save us, they'll never get us. Hmm, nice one. It's on our shores, come on. He's cooking something. Oh, we never know what's coming from us. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. That, that's a good warm up. That's a good warm up. That's a good warm up. The theme of the event is moments that made us. Oh. Out. So the next, next time, I think you should start it. I think it's not fair that I start it every time. So, Savvy, you start it. You're starting this time, but you're, what's, what's it going on? Yeah. Don't know, it's a Why? Said why? That's my... Why? Okay. Okay. Clone. Because our currency has started becoming shy. Hey. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> wow, there is lost. <laughs> Even though you don't know why, it really makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still flying. We're supposed to fly.
Okay. To quit my record label, my mama said she has had enough. So I took my things and I made moves with the same jeans and the same shoes. Got into the studio and stayed through. Happened for me, it could happen for you. Uh -huh. Keep believing and praying, and you gotta be patient. Last, last, it could make sense. It could make sense. Or in me by Michelle. I want you guys to sing along with me. Can you? Can you guys sing along with me? It's very simple. It's very simple. It's a very simple song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Can we go now? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Read me by Michelle. King Corridale, oh, and tell me by Michelle. Shine on me, shine on me. share with you a moment that made me. I would have known if Femi was meant to be with this foolproof test. We bumped into each other at the mall. I was texting on my phone and I wasn't looking and he was bent down trying to tie his shoelaces. Ah ah! Haba! Femi's study build did not allow him to reel backwards from my push, but it caught him by surprise. He unfolded himself on the floor and had an immediate stern look on his face like he wanted to beat me. I was just there begging him. My mouth was full of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I did not see you, I'm sorry, please, I'm sorry. Because, I mean, he was tall. He was literally towering over me. Then his scowl turned into a very sweet smile, revealing a gap tooth in the middle. He said, 
oh. And then I noticed that the smile made his face look softer. So I wasn't so scared anymore. Then he touched my shoulders very gently and said in almost a whisper, it's okay. I'm Femi, while he stretched out his hand for a handshake. I mumbled, Marisa. Ah, Marisa, such a sweet name. Do you have WhatsApp? I called it up for him while he typed it on his iPhone. It was so nice meeting you, but for such a cute girl, you have very strong knees. Are you a footballer? He asked me. No, I laughed. I was blushing by now because Femi was so handsome. His fragrance smelled as if he owned a thousand luxury stores in Dubai. I mean, he looked like a model, but like an actor, or, or like he looked like so many different things. He didn't look real. And that began my Hamatan love. We text each other back and forth so many times throughout December. I mean, I'm used to having a clean December, but by January, I knew that I was ready for laundry. Femi took me to restaurants with bills that were higher than my monthly salary. I mean, I, couldn't, I didn't even know that people could eat for that amount of money. This was what I was living for a month. We went to parties that people were not, the regular people in the streets were not invited to. I even saw Bonner Boy face to face. I mean, this is somebody I see on TV or on my phone or, but I, I never dreamed I would have seen him face to face. My sister Judith became envious of me. Anytime I'm on the phone with Femi, she was constantly hissing. See them again. She looked jealous. Like you could see her face grow green with envy. But then, you know, I would tease her and tell her, jealousy. You know, singing some people jealous me because I know in her life she can never bag somebody as fine as Femi. And as rich too. But how is it that on the 25th of January, 2023, Femi's number was not going through. In fact, his number was switched off. I did not hear from him that day. I went to his flat because I was so angry. I mean, this was, he was my life from December till January up to that day. I did not talk to anybody else apart from Femi and maybe occasionally my sister, but he was literally like my life. So I met a man there in his flat, a man I didn't know. And I'm like, where's Femi? And he's like, who's Femi? And I'm Femi, Femi lived here. And he's so clueless. And then I'm like, okay. And he's like, he just moved in here just last week. I'm like, Moved in, like, I, I was confused. But since it was a guy, I mean, I, 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 I believe that Femi wasn't playing tricks on me. I mean, if it was a girl, I'd have been like, definitely, Femi is cheating. But it was a guy. His name was Shego, and he's like, he doesn't know Femi, and he's, he's just a tenant. <sighs> My sister became the Valentine Grinch when she asked me on Valentine's Day and said, you know, while looking at her watch, uh, Marisa, isn't your date coming to pick you? It's 6 p.m. now. I, I've not seen any gifts, and me, I'm expecting events from this year, Femi. I decided to lock myself in a room and read Lida Yukeji's blog to distract myself because the insult was too much. I found stories of people more miserable than me, and this made me laugh at my own situation, you know. That sentence, Miji like slow's company and you know i was basically in the company of major people feel but there were, there was a chief amongst them so i didn't feel so bad about myself anymore so i kept scrolling you know scrolling scrolling the mouse scrolling and then i saw a post january 24th 2023 and it caught my eye i saw femi's picture ah daikeji femi with the caption lagos big boy extradited to the uk for the murder of 15 women yeah! I shouted. I was like, hey, what? <laughs> Judith had to bust into my room. I'm like, ah, why are you shouting? What's going on? I just handed out my phone. I said, just look. She, she shouted, yeah! Seriously? 
Wow, wow, wow. Sylvia Killer. How? Me. I fell on my knees and I'm like, thank God. Thank God. Because how was I dating a serial killer and I did not know? Why wasn't I killed? Why didn't I pick up on any signs? Like, aren't there signs for you to know you're literally dating a serial killer? How am I still alive? How? I felt really silly for crying over him. This next song is an original and it's called Looking For Me. So I think this is this is for the ones that um, this is for the ones that had or that ate breakfast this year. <laughs> If you're one of those people that um, that had a bad, bad um, breakup and your ex wants you back, <laughs> this one is for you. song and um, yeah, um, 
it's basically about um, the power of words, like the power of the Almighty. When God says something, who can say otherwise? So it's called Hallelujah. I like to write. I like to write a lot of um, Yoruba songs. So I, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, for the non Yoruba speakers, <laughs> okay, or non Yoruba listeners. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If, if you're an overthinker, like I am, and, um, and you always worry about what's coming next, you always worry about the future, you always worry about the past, you always worry about how you're living your life and the, the decisions you're making, I think this one is for you. Um, um, this is for you to trust your choices, to trust your decisions and to know that it's for your greatest good and everything happens for a reason. Nothing we got no feet do. I feel it for Me only para me. Bada si bado. Mukba follow Oh my dami love. Spiritual healing. Spiritual healing. 